Good morning, everyone. Uh, let us wait for more participants to come in. Okay, a uh, very good morning to everyone. Uh, let us start. Uh, welcome to the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering uh, webinar. So uh, this is the second webinar that we are doing. Uh, last week, we had the alumni sharing webinar. So uh, for today, uh, our focus will be more on curriculum as well as uh, student life sharing. So uh, this is the program for today. Uh, we'll have some brief uh, introduction as well as for you to view the Dean's uh, welcome message. And then after that, uh, Prof Tam Ching Kong will talk about our new curriculum. Uh, Dr. Chua Ting Chen will talk, discuss about student life. And then we have with us today uh, two students from electrical engineering and two students from the computer engineering program. So in the meantime, if you have any question uh, as we do our presentation, please uh, post it under the Q&A button at the bottom of your Zoom. So uh, these are the people that are here with us today from the department. Uh, our head of department, uh, Prof. Wai Si Liang is here. Uh, Prof. Tan Cheng Kong in charge of the undergraduate programs and student life. Uh, Professor Hari Gat, who is the co-chair of the Computer Engineering Joint Academic Committee. And uh, we also have Professor Pralat uh, with us. Uh, he's a hall master with the PGP house. So any question related to on-campus accommodation, you can check with him. He is also the man uh, behind the robotic specialization, so you can ask him as well. Uh, Dr. Chua Ting Chen is our associate head looking after student life. Uh, anything about student life activities, again, uh, she will be here to answer your question. And myself is uh, Arthur Tay. Uh, I'm the deputy head looking after outreach. So uh, very importantly, uh, our students are here uh, this morning as well. Uh, we have seen in Approva, Sizi, and Yi Jie. They will be here to share with you uh, their different experience uh, from NUS Overseas College to summer programs, their industrial attachment, uh, doing different specialization, minor, etc. So uh, let me share with you the Dean's welcome message. Engineering is about solving some of the world's toughest problems. But the challenges engineers face are becoming more complex. So at NUS Engineering, we are transforming how we train the engineers of the future. Hi, I'm Aaron. I'm the Dean of NUS Engineering. As engineering challenges evolve, engineers need to draw on an ever broader range of skills and knowledge. So we have reimagined our curriculum. For students starting in August 2021, you will have a bigger range of options than ever before. We think of it as your opportunity to build your own degree. You have the flexibility to study both the traditional engineering disciplines while broadening your skills in other areas. NUS Engineering is already ranked in the top 10 globally for engineering, 
and is number one in Singapore for graduate employability. We have a world-class faculty who are global leaders in cutting-edge research, such as biomedical engineering, medical technology, quantum engineering, and advanced materials. Over the past year, many of our faculty have stepped up to join the fight against COVID-19, developing new testing kits, therapeutics, and protection equipment designed to keep frontline healthcare workers safe. As an NUS engineering student, you will engage with and learn from these experts. We have access to the latest digital technologies and labs. From day one, you'll be exposed to hands-on engineering using robotics and drones and work on other cool projects that will build your foundational knowledge. NUS Engineering is at the heart of a global network with exchange programs with leading engineering schools around the world, strong ties with NUS Overseas College Program, and industry connections that offer access to a world of exciting internships. At NUS Engineering, we're here to help you discover your passions, to build your skills to the best you can be, and go where you want to go. So please come join us we're looking forward to building the future engineering with you. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, so the next video clip that we are going to show talks about our Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering. Engineering. Electrical and computer engineering encompasses a range of fields that form the backbone of our modern digital economy. At NUS, we offer two degree programs in electrical and computer engineering. Students on both programs get to work on projects covering themes from Internet of Things and autonomous systems to energy, sustainability, and smart healthcare. Some students have even designed and built satellites that have been actually launched into space. From the processors that power our mobile phones to autonomous vehicles and augmented reality, electrical and computer engineers are behind the most transformative innovations. Electrical engineers create technologies from tiny microchips to electric vehicles to nationwide power grids that use electricity and electromagnetism. Computer engineers build intelligence into ever smaller, smarter, and more powerful devices that enrich modern life. At NUS Electrical Engineering, there are a lot of opportunities for hands-on learning. For example, the lab modules in which we build and experiment with electrical circuits really help me understand and appreciate the theory. There are also a lot of opportunities to learn different coding languages skills that are highly sought after by employers. NUS ECE provides a variety of overseas exchange and internship opportunities for students. I took part in NOC New York and got to work at a fast-moving startup, honing my interpersonal and technical skills there. Through the modules I've taken, I got the opportunity to apply AI and software engineering to real-world scenarios. At NUS ECE, students plan their education to match their interests and career aspirations. We combine a strong emphasis on learning the fundamentals with a high degree of flexibility, mixing education, business and research opportunities. Our students can also embark on various industry tracks and specialisations, from AI and data engineering to robotics, as well as in exchange programmes and entrepreneurship opportunities at NUS overseas colleges. Electrical and computer engineering opens up a world of discovery, preparing you for careers that are full of exciting challenges. ECE graduates work in fields such as research and development, design, manufacturing, banking, management consulting and software development. Some alumni have even launched their own businesses that find innovative ways of applying electrical and computer engineering technologies. Our programs are designed to develop a versatile engineers primed and ready to work at the cutting edge of the digital economy and the smart nation. Join us for an inspiring university experience, preparing you for an exciting career that innovates for the future.
Okay, uh, so uh, let us next welcome uh, Prof Tan Cheng Kong uh, to talk about our new curriculum. Uh, Cheng Kong, please. Right, thank you, Arthur. Let me uh, first share my slides and then we can get going. Right, good morning, everybody. And thank you for the opportunity to share uh, details of our exciting new um, electrical engineering and computer engineering curriculum with you. The Dean in his introductory uh, video just now has mentioned about the many opportunities um, that this gives you to build your own degree. And I will uh, further expand uh, on that. So uh, another way of saying build your own degree is to chart your own learning journey. And on our website, uh, if you have visited it, you will see this um, diagram, uh, which I will sort of uh, use as um, a starting point to um, sort of uh, give details on how uh, you can actually uh, chart your own learning journey. So you can actually uh, have a range of options um, and go either broad or deep, uh, depending on your uh, interests and passions. And uh, uh, starting from the bottom, we have this uh, common curriculum indicated in light blue that is actually specially designed with the uh, School of uh, Design and Environment um, that will give you many uh, 21st century core uh, competencies. And then in the orange boxes, um, either electrical engineering or computer engineering is your major. Um, and then on top of that, uh, we have what is called an unrestricted elective space where you can actually do uh, specializations if you want to go deep or you can do minors um, in other uh, faculties or schools in NUS if you want to broaden your knowledge. Um, and um, also you can even do a second major uh, that is indicated uh, in green. Uh, so uh, to sort of give you more uh, details about the uh, common curriculum block, um, it actually makes up about 37.5% of the time you spend in NUS. And then the uh, major block that you see here uh, makes up the other 37.5% and then the unrestricted electives about a quarter or 25%. Uh, so uh, going deeper into the common curriculum, actually there are uh, 13 modules um, with an integrated project. And actually six out of the 13 modules are common across NUS. So all NUS students uh, take modules in uh, data literacy, digital literacy, uh, critique and expression, uh, appreciating human cultures and how to make connections between them. Uh, uh, being aware of the community and how to engage uh, various communities of interest as well as Singapore studies. Um, and then on top of that, uh, together with the uh, School of Design and Environment, um, we have uh, uh, seven pillars or modules imparting uh, interdisciplinary skills such as artificial intelligence, project management, systems thinking, and creating narratives, which is very important um, in this uh, day and age where there are many uh, loud voices out there and we need to be able to create meaningful narratives. And then uh, very importantly, design thinking, the emotive and the aesthetic uh, values of design, as well as the maker space that translates the designs into a reality. And then Sustainable Futures is to equip everyone with uh, knowledge about uh, sustainability um, issues um, very, very relevant in uh, today's uh, age where climate change is at the forefront of the agenda. So uh, let me start with electrical engineering. Uh, so uh, this at a glance actually shows you the um, structure of the program. Uh, so at the uh, blue boxes is the common curriculum that I just talked about. And then now if we zoom in on the um, dark orange and light orange uh, 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 boxes is where um, the major um, uh, 
in this case, electrical engineering uh, uh, SIDS. So we have um, modeling and simulation, professionalism and internship that is common across the uh, whole engineering uh, faculty. So whether you're a mechanical engineering student or electrical or computer engineering, you take the um, dark orange uh, 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 modules. Then um, uh, what is uh, uniquely electrical engineering are the uh, light uh, orange boxes. And in uh, this is where uh, you uh, acquire the knowledge to become uh, electric an electrical engineer. So um, electro electrical engineering is um, built on um, electromagnetism. So you do a module on, on electromagnetics. Um, we uh, teach you uh, additional analytical methods and then um, electronic circuits and electrical energy systems, very important in this day of electrification and um, electric vehicles and so on. And then uh, uh, digital design or microcontroller programming, uh, very uh, important uh, in this uh, day and age of embedded systems. And then signals and systems, how to deal with them and the mathematical characterization. And uh, to actually give everyone uh, a flavor um, from the very beginning, we have the uh, electrical engineering principles and practice uh, one and two modules in which um, right in the first year, you get uh, hands-on um, experience. And uh, I can show you uh, uh, our first year students really having a great time um, during the engineering principles and practice um, sessions where they work in groups uh, to brainstorm, to design and to actually uh, get things working uh, in an exciting fashion right in the first year. So coming back to this uh, overall picture, you will notice that we have um, space for two technical electives um, as well to be done um, in electrical engineering. So, uh, but before I go into the rich, uh, the rich uh, range of uh, modules that you can take uh, for technical electives, I also want to point out that um, for the unrestricted electives, uh, what uh, we would uh, uh, recommend um, students to do is to actually either take a second major, which uh, uses up um, all the uh, 10 uh, blocks that you see there. Um, and this is where, you know, um, right at the beginning, my first diagram, where you have a range of options ranging from second major to minor to specializations. Uh, this is where you can put uh, different uh, building blocks uh, into the top two rows. Um, of your entire uh, curriculum. So uh, in terms of technical electives, um, electrical engineering has really a rich set of about 35 uh, technical electives covering areas such as communications and networks, uh, integrated circuits and embedded systems, uh, uh, control intelligence systems and robotics, microelectronic technologies, power and energy systems, signal analysis and machine intelligence, microwave and radio frequency, and also some general modules like um, blockchain engineering and innovation and enterprise. So uh, why do we have such a rich set of modules? Uh, we believe in um, empowering students to really uh, acquire in-depth knowledge in areas of their interest. Um, and this will uh, build up your technical skills as well as your uh, broader uh, skills in addition to making you highly marketable um, to the employers um, in industries that you wish to work in. So uh, I mentioned specializations and minors. Uh, so uh, hosted at the ECE department, we have two specializations, the Internet of Things specialization, which is uh, quite popular, uh, and the robotics um, specialization as well. Uh, uh, so the Internet of Things specialization, we run this together with the computer science department at the School of Computing. Uh, robotics is with uh, mechanical engineering and biomedical uh, engineering. And then the minor in data engineering as well is to equip um, students with uh, in-depth uh, skills in this uh, data rich world um, where you actually acquire uh, skills to build scalable IT systems that enable uh, intelligent data-driven decisions uh, to be made, be it in financial industries or healthcare industry, 
as well as um, engineering uh, industries such as power and energy. Uh, in addition to the two uh, specializations and the minor, we have four um, specializations uh, in the pipeline. Uh, basically, these modules already exist, um, but uh, a, a specialization has a formal meaning in the NUS sense. It requires um, approval by the Ministry of Education, and we are currently uh, uh, submitting um, this uh, specializations for MOE approval, but all the modules are already there as I showed just now, and definitely um, you will be able to acquire uh, in-depth knowledge in Industry 4.0, uh, advanced electronics, um, for example, if you are interested in how the latest Apple M1 chip works and also to design the next generation of such system on chips, um, this is the specialization to take um, electric vehicles and renewable energy for sustainability. Um, uh, as you, you may have heard that uh, in 2030, uh, uh, the cars on the road will become electrified. Um, so uh, cars like Tesla and other uh, brands, um, if you want to know more, more deeply about how they work and how to use renewable energy to uh, power them, uh, in the name of sustainability, this is the specialization to take. And then space technology is also something that we have developed a specialization for. Um, so if you're interested in uh, what SpaceX is doing and also satellites, uh, this is the specialization that um, you will be interested uh, in. So in addition to uh, the program itself, um, I mentioned the uh, second majors and the minors. Um, uh, listed here are a set of second majors and minors that you can apply for, and I think some of you would have already done that at the point of admission when you come to NUS. Actually, NUS has uh, more than 30 second major programs um, and more than 70 minor programs that you can take. And even though uh, uh, those that are not listed here uh, uh, basically, you apply for those after maybe one to two years uh, after you come to NUS. So basically, uh, there are many, many things um, that you can do uh, to chart your own learning journey in NUS. And uh, some of you may be interested in uh, double degrees. Um, for example, uh, we have engineering with business administration and engineering with economics. And uh, this uh, take a little bit longer, maybe four and a half years, uh, but uh, uh, other than the double degree, everything else, um, you can complete it uh, within four years. Uh, com coming to computer engineering, which is a, a program jointly offered with the School of Computing, uh, you will see that the uh, bottom four rows are the same uh, as uh, electrical engineering. And uh, it's only the light orange boxes uh, that are different. Uh, so in computer engineering, um, being a multidisciplinary program, it has um, uh, uh, eight uh, core modules in real-time operating systems, uh, discrete structures, which is a kind of uh, mathematics that is relevant to uh, computer engineering. Uh, and then you also have computer networks, data structures and algorithms, software engineering and object-oriented programming digital circuits and computer organization, uh, digital design, signals and systems, as well as the two uh, computer engineering uh, flavored uh, engineering principles and practice uh, modules. All that I've said about electrical engineering um, uh, in terms of the second major or the minor or the specializations um, apply to uh, computer engineering as well. So uh, just as uh, electrical engineering has many uh, uh, areas of technical electives, uh, co computer engineering has modules uh, in areas like large scale computing, uh, embedded computing, interactive digital media, uh, communications and networking, intelligence systems, as well as system on chip uh, uh, design. And uh, going into the actual uh, technical electives, in electrical engineering, I mentioned that we have like about 35 uh, technical electives that you can choose from. Uh, in, for computer engineering, the list is even longer and we have about 50 technical electives. 
that you can really pick and choose according to your interests and uh, inclinations and the industry that you want to work um, in after you graduate. So uh, I mentioned the uh, uh, engineering principles and practice hands-on experiential uh, program uh, that you can participate right in the first year. But after going through our rigorous uh, program, uh, you will acquire in-depth skills. And one of the uh, great demonstrations of the in-depth skills that um, uh, being applied is uh, our student uh, organization, uh, Bumblebee. Some of you may have heard about them. They actually build uh, a class leading uh, autonomous underwater vehicles, AUVs, which take part in the RoboSub competition and uh, uh, come you know, either second or third, um, as well as the uh, Maritime Robot X uh, Challenge um, where they were first in 2018. Um, and these are uh, international competitions. And you can see in the middle there, the uh, uh, Autonomous Surface Vehicle or ASV being uh, on a showcase in a uh, technology event um, recently. So uh, basically, um, we will hone your skills to a high degree um, to the point that um, you will acquire um, class leading skills uh, even, either in the student activity, um, as well as to make you very marketable and sought after by um, employers. So I come back to the uh, uh, diagram that I showed right at the beginning. Um, I hope that in my short presentation, you would have a better idea of how um, we are able to really uh, equip you with either, uh, uh, firstly, uh, uh, rigorous uh, technical in-depth knowledge in either electrical engineering or computer engineering um, that will actually enable you to work in a range of industries. Um, if you want to go uh, deep, you can take two specializations such as um, uh, the smart device developer indicated on the left. Um, if you want to do minors, if you want to be a quantitative analyst working in the financial industry, you can do uh, a minors uh, in quantitative finance as well as economics. You can do a, a second major in innovation and design. Uh, you can, uh, uh, what is not shown here is the combination of a minor and a specialization, uh, which is definitely um, possible as well. So, uh, uh, and, and then not, it doesn't stop there. Um, the thing is NUS has a, a very uh, strong and extensive uh, set of uh, partnerships and collaborations with overseas uh, universities and uh, centers of uh, entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneurial activity. Uh, we started this in uh, 2002 um, with uh, NUS Overseas Colleges Silicon Valley and we have been steadily adding uh, destinations over the years. And the most recent one in 2020 is um, Nagoya. So uh, in this uh, uh, 11 places um, all over the world, uh, students uh, spend either one year or six months um, working with a startup, attending classes in uh, top universities. Uh, like for example, in Silicon Valley, our students can take courses at Stanford University and the Modules that they take at Stanford, for example, can be mapped back to their NUS uh, modules. And um, that uh, basically means you still graduate um, at the same time as your classmates who did not go on um, NOC. And I believe some of our students afterwards will share with you some of their um, NOC experiences. And if you don't go on uh, NOC, that is the Student Exchange Program or SEP, uh, where really the world is your oyster. Um, NUS has more than 190 exchange partners um, worldwide. So um, I hope in this short presentation, um, I've given you a, a good idea of the uh, undergraduate uh, curriculum, either in electrical engineering or computer engineering that um, you'll be uh, participating in when you come to NUS. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, King Kong. Uh, next, uh, we have our undergraduate students that is going to share with you their student life experience in NUS. 
So uh, first, uh, let me uh, introduce uh, you to uh, Aprova. So he's a EE4 student. He actually graduated uh, this year and has started working. Uh, Aprova, please share your slide. Um, are you able to see the screen? Thank you. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Aparva, and uh, like uh, Prof. Arthur said, I graduated this year, actually. So uh, I stayed in Raffles Hall during my first two years um, in NUS. And uh, actually, I would encourage all of you to you know, try and stay in any hall or RC if you're able to, because it really uh, it allowed me to make some really good friends in EE and uh, it made collaborating for projects uh, so much more enjoyable and convenient. Uh, so I did a specialization in uh, IoT and I was also part of NOC Toronto. Uh, so I chose to apply for NOC because I had worked at a startup before NOC and I really enjoyed it. And uh, NOC was a good opportunity for me to not only experience the, the startup culture again, but also this time to get behind the, the brains of creating and running a startup. So I have interest in both hardware and software. So I was fortunate to get a technical internship uh, at, a, at, a, at a startup called Argentum, where I was able to get uh, hands-on with both aspects. And uh, this opportunity enabled me to exercise the skills that I had learned uh, from the courses that I had taken before, like uh, microcontroller programming, but also learn new things like uh, hardware assembly. So being in such a small company, uh, there was a lot of independent learning involved uh, as I had to take on many tasks by myself. Uh, and it put me in a position to, to sort of learn to be resourceful. Uh, but I was also able to contribute to the progress of the company as more than just a, a firmware engineer um, by helping with other areas outside of the scope of my role, such as like front end and back end. And also providing my opinions to help to uh, better the structure of the system and to improve the product uh, overall. So I also took modules at the University of Toronto um, that taught me about the various aspects of uh, running a startup and bringing a product to the market. Uh, I attended several entrepreneur, entrepreneurial events uh, and learned a lot from those experiences uh, uh, that, that the founders at those events shared. Uh, we also got plenty of opportunities to go for hackathons and uh, for, for one of the hackathons, my, the, my group managed to win, win first place uh, for one of those hackathons. So uh, NOC, uh, provides a lot of uh, learning opportunities outside of your technical domain. So that's really the, 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 good, uh, the, the good thing about NOC is that you learn not just about, uh, you strengthen your skills in, in, in your, uh, that you're interested in, but also you get to learn a lot of things outside of, of, uh, of what you are, you are entailed to do. So Argentum, uh, the company that I was working for, is uh, developing an IoT system with sensors and gateway for building automation and management. So this is actually where my interest in IoT sparked. And so uh, when I, after I returned, I took the IoT specialization. And I'm really glad that I was able to take it because the modules are very diverse and interesting. So, so the photos here are, are, are of my experiences in Toronto, uh, but I'm, I'll be sharing about, my, about the IoT specialization. Uh, but so don't, don't get mistaken that, you know, like machine learning is only for CS students. Uh, IoT and machine learning tie in really well together. And, you know, there are two very great modules in this specialization that, that go into machine learning in great detail. So what I like about the IoT specialization is that the modules cover many aspects of an IoT system from the operational physics of the sensors to networks and communications to data analysis. So, you know, I would recommend any of you to, to, to take the IoT specialization if you're interested in sensor systems. Uh, outside of this, I also took uh, some CS modules as electives out of interest uh, that, that were that complemented the software related E modules. So some of the modules, CS modules that I took uh, were data structures and algorithms and uh, introduction to operating systems. And uh, now I, am, I, I have managed to find a job. I'm working as an embedded software engineer uh, at a startup that is developing a wirelessly powered uh, IoT system. Yeah, thank you.
Thank you, Apurva. Next, uh, we have singing from the electrical engineering program as well. Singing, uh, you can on your video and share your slides. Okay, thanks, Prof. D. So uh, let me share my slides now. I hope you guys can see my slides. Yes. Okay, you can. Okay, so I, I will first begin by giving you guys a self introduction. So I'm in, uh, I just graduated from electrical engineering and I did a second major in innovation and design program. So in year two, uh, I went to Korea for summer school at Hanyang. Uh, during my first two years at NUS, I was also part of the ECE club. So um, as, since I'm part of the IDP program, right, uh, apart from the curriculum provided by ECE, uh, we will have to study design modules and electives under the IDP program. So year one and two focus more on the theories and concepts of design making, where we learn and apply uh, brainstorming techniques on real world problem. So one of the modules actually made us produce a prototype to a chosen problem. So my group and I wanted to resolve the problem of a lack of handles on the NUS shuttle bus. So what we did was we created a portable and flexible hook that could be attached onto the water bottle. So anybody with this um, item can actually un unravel the, the hook and then put it onto the shuttle bus itself. So in year two and three, we had to do a year long design project. So the project that my group did was to design and build a surgical um, tool checker for surgeons and theatre staff in NUH. So this project was my first ever hands-on project that interacted with real stakeholders uh, to build a workable um, prototype. So during this entire one year, we managed to go into NUH uh, to the surgical theatres to see how um, the people there actually manage and work uh, during the surgery to clean and like check their tools. So this project was actually the most rewarding project I've ever worked on because um, the process was really arduous, but we managed to come up with a, a quite a brilliant prototype. And our project was even uh, invited for showcase at the NUS Greater Good Series for engineering and medicine. So in year four, I did my FYP uh, with IDP uh, together with my internship company on a topic of for identification using radar and machine learning. So I also cleared electives offered by NUS Business School. So these electives are taken mainly to help us gain knowledge on entrepreneurship and they teach us, us on business aspects such as you know, building a solid business proposal. So this will help you bring your prototype into life. And if you are lucky, right, you can actually pitch your ideas to potential investors. So summer school uh, was one of my highlights uh, in my university life uh, where I traveled to Korea for class. So one unique thing about summer school is actually the wide range of unique modules you can actually pick up. And some of these modules, um, uh, are, can't, you can't really find them in NUS. So one module that I took that cannot be found in NUS is called uh, Introduction in Criminology where we learn criminal theory by a professor working in the industry. So he invited over NYPD officers during our lesson to share with us how NYPD worked in the US. So he even brought us um, to the prosecutor's office in Korea. And um, when we are there, they showed us their labs and even real world evidence collected during their raids. So on the days without lesson, me and my friends, we traveled around Korea and even had the opportunity to go for a NARC festival. So outside school, I was part of EC club and participated in engine orientation camps. So at EC club, uh, we organized and planned events such as like welfare packs and orientation camps for the incoming freshmen. So since this year, um, there is still COVID. So I guess the activities will still be held online uh, to help the freshmen make friends uh, within their court and know seniors who they can approach for help you know, during their first year. So this entire experience at EC club was a very fulfilling one as I learned many soft skills, um, such as like leadership, adaptability, flexibi fle uh, flexibility, as well as I managed to network um, between companies when I was trying to do some um, sponsorship and marketing. So um, uh, at ECE Club, right, whenever you plan events, you actually get to see your own hard work pay off, uh, especially during camps where you get to see like your freshmen and your OGLs enjoy themselves during the camp that you actually plan. So yeah, that's it for my experience in university. Thank you, Singing. Uh, next up, we have our computer engineering student, uh, Si Zhi. She's going to share with us her experience. Uh, si Zhi, you're muted. Ah, okay, sorry. Okay, 
Hi everyone, my name is Si Zhi. I'm a year three computer engineering student at NUS. So today I'd just like to share with you a bit of my personal journey uh, in NUS computer engineering. Some things that I hope that I had known when I was making the decision uh, to accept this NUS engineering offer. And hopefully that will make our job easier. So this is me. I am standing at uh, New York Times Square. So I was there at uh, the United States to represent uh, Singapore uh, represent NUS at uh, International Synthetic Biology Competition. So you might be thinking, oh, Synthetic Biology, are you still in the EC open house? Well, Synthetic Biology is at the intersection of biology and engineering, and that just happens to be where my interest lies in. So in Synthetic Biology, instead of writing codes to uh, communicate with your computer, you are changing the code of the DNA of a living organism to make it do cool things like grow in the dark or instead of designing digital circuits on the electrical circuit box, you are designing the biological circuits to change the biological processes of the cell. So I'm not telling you that you have to be interested in biology to come to ECE, of course not. I am telling you that with uh, education in ECE, you develop such versatile skills that you can apply these skills to solve problems in any industry. And I would really encourage you that even if you do not know what industry you want to enter um, in the future, uh, EC is a very good uh, place for you to learn the skills set that to, to first develop a good uh, skill set so that in the future you have a, a lot of doors open for you to solve problems in many different industries. Yeah, so just to show you some uh, pictures of my competition. So this is when we visited MIT. Um, when we were uh, in Boston for the competition. And my teammates consisted of people from biomedical engineering, from chemical engineering, from life science. So in NUS or in NUS engineering, uh, what is really cool is that you get so many different opportunities to do things outside of your coursework, uh, be it like competitions, projects, or CITs. And it's really up to you to take up these opportunities. And I would really encourage uh, someone in uh, NUS engineering to go and explore into these opportunities that's outside your coursework because I believe this is where you really deepen your skill set, put your skill set into practice and um, broaden your perspectives and make new friends. And yeah, we won the first prize in our category, in our uh, foundation advanced category for the competition. So other than competitions, uh, another fun thing that I think engineers like to do is to take part in hackathons. So this hackathon was, uh, this Microsoft Azure um, AI hackathon was held um, uh, over the past uh, six months. And my team and I developed a product uh, to monitor the health of birds in aviaries in Singapore. So our product actually consisted of an IoT system um, and AI on the cloud and also a uh, web application that will alert the caretakers of the birds to uh, when there is an injured bird. So you see, um, as a computer engineer, you learn so many different uh, types of skills that you're able to put uh, different technologies together to make a product that really makes a difference. And I honestly, I am really amazed that through my education, uh, through my three years of education in uh, NUS computer engineering, I can actually uh, come up with a product that uh, come up with such a product that can make a difference. So, um, yeah, so I used to think that hackathons are only for uh, people who are like really good at tech or those tech geeks. But honestly, I would, uh, I would say that uh, as an engineer, uh, you, are trained to, uh, you are trained to solve uh, problems uh, given uh, limited resources and given a short amount of time. And that is basically uh, what the hackathons require from you. So as an engineer, I would just tell you that I, I think you will be trained to be really, really good at hackathons and you can win some exciting prize money together with your friends. Okay, so enough talk about competitions and hackathons. Um, I think that why I'm really grateful for my education in NUS engineering is not uh, not because I can, I can go for these uh, competitions overseas and also not because of the prizes that we win. I think that I really saw myself grow through my journey in NUS and there are some uh, key lessons that I've learned in, uh, in my journey. So I'd just like to share with you some of these lessons. So the first lesson that I learned is uh, grit and humility. So in NUS uh, ECE, your coursework is very tough. 
and I believe that it is tough love because um because in your assignments uh sometimes it will take you like one week to do uh to do a small assignment and you would fail and fail and fail and fail and fail and fail over and over again but then you keep uh trying you come up with new ideas you come up with new approach to solve the problem and through this process you really you really see uh yourself persevere through and and you really develop the determination and resilience to solve problems and i think this is grit is a is a characteristic is a skill that is important in not just engineering but also in life so yeah and the second lesson that i learned is adaptability and resourcefulness so uh, often you're given a project with very limited instructions or uh, when you're part of a competition team uh, your entire team might be relying on you to do the computer engineering or electrical engineering part of the competition but you might not have the adequate knowledge or resources to do it and when you're put in such situations this is when you really harness all your creativity juices you harness all the lessons from your past failures and also the friends that you have made along your way to pull yourself through and you might not get you might not escape the the problem uh, very elegantly but this battle scars that you have gained uh, from today from solving the problems of today will really help you to solve the problems of tomorrow uh, more easily and lastly it's self confidence um i think that in engineering um often the the greatest barrier that you have to overcome is not the problems that are facing you but whether you believe in yourself that you can solve the problem. So when you believe in yourself, you really see how strong and how capable you are. And truly nothing builds up your self-confidence like watching yourself persevere through something very difficult and come out, uh, come out uh, emerge, emerge successfully from it. So yeah, so these are just some of the lessons that I have learned in my journey in uh, NUS Computer Engineering. So I hope that from my sharing, uh, you can see that um, you don't have to want to work at a big tech company like Google or Facebook, or you don't have to aspire to build flying cars to come to uh, engineering. Engineering is for anyone. Uh, I feel that uh, these life lessons are really helpful for, can be really helpful for anyone. So I'm not sure if this is the universal engineering experience, but I can vouch uh, that my experience, my engineering experience at NUS ECE has been a wonderful joyride. And if my experience uh, inspires you, touches you, I hope that uh, you will join us at NUS ECE and build your own, uh, build your own path. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, Si Zhi. Uh, thanks for sharing with us your experience here. Uh, next, uh, we have Yi Jie also from computer engineering. Testing, testing, can everyone hear me? Okay. So hi, my name is Yu Jie. Uh, I'm a year three CEG student. Today I'll be sharing a little bit more about EC student life. And hopefully if you are interested, you'll join us in NUS soon. So firstly, I would like to confess that, you know, when I first joined CEG, I did not really have a clue uh, what was it about. However, after gradually getting to know this major more, I actually grew to like ECE for its really unique culture. So today, there are just about two things that I want to share with you about why I like ECE. Okay, so firstly, I think one of the best things that ECE has to offer would be the Undergraduate Student Council. ECE is different from other departments in NUS because it likes to take a bottom-up approach to student life. In fact, there are professors that are specifically focused on this matter. As a member of the Student Council, some of the things that the USC does include uh, gathering feedback for the modules that students take. So for example, if students feedback that a particular module needs more practice papers, or if a lecture is rather vague, the USC actually collects such feedback and we provide them to the professors on your behalf. From such feedback, professors can grow to become better teachers, and as students, we can also learn more effectively. Apart from that, we also organize large scale school events like a welcome party for freshmen, so you can have more opportunities to interact with your fellow peers and professors, or even career fair to help you secure an internship for your summer holidays or a job before you graduate. 
So this was actually a STEPS Technology Camp 2019, where we helped the ECE department in their outreach to students from various JCs, oh, uh, from uh, various JCs and various nationalities. Together, we helped to bring them around Singapore to visit places of interest. We visited places like Chinatown and Little India, which were cultural places and places like uh, STAR, which stands for Satellite Technology and Research Center, where they learn more about the satellites that Singapore has sent to space. Apart from that, we also attended an event hosted by them where they showed us a fun night of entertainment. Apart from that, they were also tasked to build an automated vehicle which could overcome various obstacles with the use of machine learning. Using an onboard camera, the vehicle would detect left turn or right turn uh, signs and move accordingly. Being in EC is good in the sense that, you know, it's not really not just all about academics. You get to learn interpersonal skills which are useful in the working world as well. Next, I'd like to share more about uh, industrial attachment. Whenever my friends ask me what is ECE about, I like to describe to them that ECE is like an international buffet. There are so many different dishes to try. You can try out, uh, for example, a particular module on machine learning or cryptography, robotics, IoT, networking, and so many other different subjects. And the best part is that the modules that you take actually help you to better appreciate the things that you learn. Remember back in A-level or maybe some mathematics differentiation lesson that you took in secondary school. You don't really understand the purpose behind it because there was no real application back then. However, now that I'm in ECE, I'm starting to understand the importance of these uh, minor details that I've learned in the past, like how differentiation actually ties in with gradient descent in machine learning. Personally, for me, I went on an industrial attachment in DSTA where I worked on a machine learning project and I have found that the modules that ECE offers, like software engineering and data structures, to be very useful when I'm handling projects in a big company. Lastly, I'd like to end off with a quote by Babe Ruth. ECE will be tough, just like A-levels, just like any other majors, just like any other challenges that you'll face in your life. However, don't let that stop you from what I would consider to be a great opportunity to improve and challenge yourself. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Yi Jie. Uh, finally, uh, we have Dr. Chua Ting Jian. She looks after our student life and she's going to share more as things that uh, what our students do during their four years uh, with us. Uh, Ting Jian, please. All right. Thank you very much, Prof. Tay. All right. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, very good morning to everybody. My name is Ting Chen and I'm the Associate Head of Student Life at our department. So I don't think I can top what our students have shared, so I'm going to keep my presentation short and sweet. Okay, I'm going to share with you a little bit more about Student Life at NUS and specifically uh, some of the Student Life activities or efforts we conduct at our department. So at NUS, there is always something going on because NUS is a really big campus and there is always some activity ranging from um, community service events, arts events, all the way to technological events such as um, we are actually starting a new student uh, organization uh, called AI at SG at NUS, so it's a NUS chapter. So uh, no matter where your interests lie, uh, you would be able to find your community so that you can find people who share your interests uh, in clubs or societies or interest groups, all right? So um, even if you are looking to develop new interests, uh, you are definitely well placed to do so. There are over 200 student organizations at NUS. Okay, these student organizations are called student clubs, student societies, or student interest groups. They range from things like anime club, a gaming club, a social work club, photography club. So there's really a huge uh, range of these activities. Uh, what you have to do is actually find, uh, you know, deciding which one you want to take part in because we only all have 24 hours a day. Okay, apart from um, student clubs, you know, interest groups, uh, residential life plays a huge part in your student life at NUS. So if you are planning to stay on campus, residential life would also play a huge part in your life here. So things like, for example, staying in halls, staying in residential colleges, um, you will definitely 
be able to benefit greatly from these activities. Okay, so what I'm going to share next are some of the specific activities uh, that we do at our department, you know, to support our students. So at uh, EC, what we hope to do is to provide a holistic and rich experience for our students outside the classroom, beyond the classroom. We hope that when our students graduate, they have a strong sense of community and friends and network, which is going to be very useful for you when you graduate. And we hope that you know you are an all-rounder for life after graduation. Now, how do we do that? Okay, uh, we do that through a plethora of activities. Uh, we have academic advising. We have things related to the industry um, together uh, with the NUS CFG. Okay, I will elaborate a more a little bit more later. We have extracurricular activities, and we support student counselling and welfare activities at the department. So. I'm just going to share with you some really specific uh, things that we do. So like, for example, at our department, we have a student portal, you know, which contains very important information for you. We have a dedicated team of people such as admin officers, year coordinators, program coordinators, which are here to support your academic planning, which we know is very important to each student, especially now when you have a myriad of choices, you know, um, prudent planning with good advice is very important so that you can achieve what you want to do. Um, at our department, we pair each student with an academic advisor, which will actually accompany you all right, throughout your four years of undergraduate education. So this academic advisor is actually a professor or a lecturer, so it's a faculty from our department. So he, will, he or she will actually you know, uh, be there for you to consult throughout your four years you know, and come, accompany you on your journey as you progress from a freshman you know, to your internship, to your exchange programs, to your final year. Um, so that you have someone to talk to or seek help from uh, at any point in time. We also work really closely you know, with our student support managers uh, at you know, the Office of Student Affairs, at counselling officers, at you know, University um, Health Centre. You know, so in case you, know, you uh, reach a low point, we are here to support you. You, know, you should always reach out, never you know, silently suffer. There are always people dedicated here, you know, and there are always people who care and there are always people here to help. Right. So um, specifically at our department, uh, we support four different student clubs. We have the undergraduate council, undergraduate student council that was shared by ETA previously. We have EC club, which was shared by Singing previously. We also have the IHPE and your student branch, IHPE HKN chapter, and we have, a, we have new chapters being developed uh, as we speak. Okay, so here are some of the activities that are actually student led and student organized. So for example, orientation activities, uh, organized by EC Club, where we support our students in organizing these activities together with uh, NUS OSA. Uh, not long ago, just this year, we organized uh, an AWS Deep Racer workshop on reinforcement learning, which was very interesting. Um, this was organized by IHP and US Student Branch. We also have a EC peer tutoring scheme at our department, where which is a uh, organized and managed by the IHP HKN chapter. So you see many of these activities are actually student proposed and student led, which is definitely what we want to encourage our students to do. So the peer tutoring scheme actually pairs um, students, senior students with uh, younger students, that means year ones and year twos, which are actually having a little bit of struggle in their academic studies. So we pair our senior students who, are, who volunteer to teach our younger students. So this has been an ongoing scheme for many years and we're really proud of it. So um, in terms of industry linkages and exposure, we have things like industry talks or visits or nowadays webinars. Uh, the, uh, many of these things support the efforts at NUS CFG, which is the Center for Future Ready Graduates. So on top of the efforts that are already done at NUS, we conduct um, activities specifically for electrical engineering or computer engineering students. So for example, in March this year, despite all the COVID restrictions, you know, we successfully held the EC internship and career fair. And all here, here in the middle, you see our students really happy with the goodies, such as bubble tea, nasty cookies, and donuts, right? Together with actually representatives from companies such as DSTA, DSO, Dyson, and places, uh, other uh, big players in the industry. So we also hold things like workshops and webinars so that you can always improve yourself technically, you know, and also get to know more people in these fields. 
So here is just a little bit, okay, about uh, student life here. Of course, there are much more than I've managed to cover in these few minutes. So very importantly is for you, you know, for you to you know uh, take charge, you know, of your uh, journey here, I know, and to make full use of these opportunities, right? So, uh, if there are any questions, please feel free to reach out, and that's the end of my sharing. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ting Jian. Uh, and thank you, everyone, uh, for the questions that you have posted, and we are trying to answer them. Uh, one of the questions that um, we have now come to the Q and A part. Uh, one of the questions that I have received uh, during registration and by many students is that um, because of the COVID-19 uh, situation, I think many of you are concerned about whether our curriculum has changed or how it has affected uh, learning on campus, right? So um, maybe Prof Tan can share with us uh, whether there's any major difference uh, this year because of COVID-19 compared to uh, previous year where we conduct lessons and whether our curriculum is being affected due to the pandemic. Yeah, thanks for the question. Uh, so in terms of the curriculum, it hasn't really been affected uh, so much in the sense that the, the modules that um, we uh, originally planned to offer um, are still being offered, um, but within each module, the way that the module is taught um, uh, had to change uh, slightly. Uh, for example, uh, uh, modules which had a lot of uh, laboratory experiments and a lot of face-to-face -face contact had to be uh, scaled back. Um, so we shifted some of the uh, learning um, online. Uh, in fact, some of the lab experiments uh, were converted to, to be a form that can be conducted online. Uh, take, for example, uh, a project with embedded systems or a lab experiment with embedded system, uh, for example. Uh, before COVID, um, students can come to the lab and they actually build the embedded system uh, in person. Uh, but uh, uh, after, you know, the COVID restrictions, uh, what the lecturers did was they connected the embedded systems uh, to the internet so that students can download their code uh, to the embedded systems uh, uh, in ECE department, and then they run the experiment uh, in that fashion. So, um, so uh, the professors and the uh, academic staff um, have really, you know, risen to the challenge of alternative uh, methods of delivering uh, the learning experiences uh, in spite of COVID. So we have not, uh, fortunate, uh, fortunately, we have not been uh, uh, disrupted uh, uh, significantly. And I think uh, most of the modules and learning objectives uh, were still uh, met uh, despite um, some minor inconveniences arising from COVID. Uh, thank you, uh, Ting Gong. Actually, uh, that is very true. We are now currently teaching uh, modified uh, engineering principle and practice module for uh, JC students. And in fact, we just started this week and because of the new various restriction, uh, part of it has been switched to online. And as this is an experiential learning type of module, what has happened is that we have actually packed all the toolkit and delivered to the school. So you can actually still continue to learn with all the necessary hardware, you know, the various multimeter, your analog device uh, stuff, you know, to conduct the experiment over the uh, Zoom. Um, the next question that uh, we have uh, is maybe more on student life. Uh, so there's a student that asked about work-life balances for our undergraduate students. So uh, maybe uh, our four students here would like to share about their work-life balance. Uh, can I invite you to see to singing and approval to on your camera and maybe share? Yeah, I think maybe I can go first. So. Um... For IDP, right, uh, there are times when you are doing projects and when the project deadline is coming up, uh, 
you tend to spend more time on like projects itself lah. Then um, you won't really have like work life balance. But it depends on how much you want to place your time and effort in, in like work and like your outside life. So um, if you are someone who like can, is capable of like managing both sides more properly, I think you will do well. Especially if you are part of IDP, yeah. because IDP um. Uh, we do a lot of prototyping, so um, you cannot give yourself a fixed deadline to finish something because you never know when something is gonna like um, go wrong. So um, yeah, I think it really de- depends um, on each individual. Uh. But for me, I think it's all right, not too bad. Yeah. Thank you, Singing. Uh, okay, if you don't mind, uh, yeah. I share next. Easy. Okay, so personally, for me, um, I feel that the key to having a really good um, work-life balance in ECE is to have a close group of friends that you know you can rely on because CEG is really uh, you can't just do it on your own uh, because there are a lot of projects there's the workload I would say it is more than average so if you have you know a good a, a close group of friends you don't necessarily need to have a lot of friends uh, if you have a close group of friends that can actually support you along the way I think you'll be a lot more manageable uh, you'll be able to do things like, for example, attend uh, events, uh, school events. You'll be able to take on multiple CCAs uh, and you'll still be able to do well. Yep. Thank you, Yijie. Uh, I agree largely with Yijie. Having friends in CEG is very important. Don't come in with the mindset that you're going to do everything alone. And I actually think that if you just do coursework, you don't do anything outside of your coursework, it's actually manageable. But uh, I think uh, this work-life balance challenge comes in when you try to take up too much commitments. And I think that it is something that you have to learn along the way as, uh, you, as you go through the years and then you realize, okay, how much, how many things can I actually have on my plate? Yeah, so it, it takes time to like find your right balance. It's different for everyone. Thank you, Sisu. Uh, uh, I think I'll just add one small thing that, um, you know, if you if you are not staying in like hall or RC, because uh, usually the commitment for like CCS and stuff is quite high in the halls and RCs. But if you're not staying, I think one thing that I, I think this one's like, I personally felt, it, it, I, I think it would help for you to try, if you are able to try and like overload uh, in year one or year two, because like um, in year three and year four, when you take, your level 3k and level 4k mods the the content is significantly harder the projects are extensively longer as well and if you're able to reduce your workload later on uh you you'll be able to put in much more effort for for your for your projects then and like you, you'll produce a bet, better quality rather than you know trying to distribute your efforts uh everywhere and like struggling to to find time to put like put in effort equally for everything so yeah, I think maybe if you're able to, uh, it, it's easier to overload with 1K modules, your, your gem modules and, and whatnot. So yeah, I think that's maybe one thing you can think about. Thank you, Approva, for your tips. And uh, actually talking about uh, on-campus accommodation, Approva stays at Rappers Hall and Sizi stays at U-Town, right? And uh, we have here with us uh, Professor Pralat as well. Uh, maybe, Pralat, you want to share with uh, our students uh, what has changed uh, because of the COVID-19 situation? How has online campus change, uh, accommodation change? Yeah, so thanks, uh, Ate. Ate um, uh, see, in, on campus, we still have about 80% of occupancy because we need to manage uh, the density based on certain directives from ministry. Uh, however, activities are going on uh, may not be in a physical space all the time. Earlier, we used to have so many activities throughout the semester and also in preparation towards the you know, starting of the academic year, especially in July. Uh, now, those are limited. And we can, of course, earlier it was eight per uh, group, then it became five, and yesterday it became two, two or three. So there are restrictions. So that we have to live with because uh, it is a responsibility uh, to take care of the community. Having said that, we do a lot of Zoom-based activities. The students have, residents have come up with wonderful, interesting ways to manage the situation. I'm really moved by that. Just now, before joining here, I had another program in which I lo- logged in 
and they are enjoying it. So there are various multiple ways to really manage. And uh, there are uh, very, uh, uh, you know, support, interesting support system. So if you look at specifically PGP House, we have uh, uh, peer mentor programs. It's a very established evidence-based approach towards helping juniors. So we have buddies from junior, for freshmen to the seniors. And then we have a cluster, we have a cluster leader, and we take care of that uh, uh, aspect very well. The second is proactive pastoral care. We really take care of students to see whether any signals are there, any difficulties are there. So some of you are talking about how to manage your work-life balance. So this is time management and stress management. So we do special uh, workshops along those directions to help students to really manage this. Many times your peers, as some of you have mentioned, help you a lot. Some of them can give tips. So I know in specific case, one of the seniors in the third year, he is damn good in studies and he, creates notes. These notes are shared with the juniors. And these juniors were so happy. Oh my goodness, I can understand this so easily. And that's the way they put it across. So please do uh, closely connect with your seniors. And this is the most important thing. That's why we have freshman orientation programs in halls and residences. So please do actively go out there. And you may be introverts, you may be extroverts, but we have space for all. So that's why we are trying to create spaces where we respect everybody. To, to give an example, one of our residents, he doesn't want to be photographed. I have 626 students to manage and we took care of him everywhere. Whenever we have an activity is there. That is the way we care each and every student on campus. Thank you, Arthur. Thank you, Prada. And uh, in the interest of time, uh, maybe we can I have one last question uh, that students have posted. Uh, uh, Professor Harika, uh, there are a few students that ask, um, what is the main difference between the computer engineering program in NUS compared to other universities? Uh, maybe you want to share a little bit about, you know, what is unique about our computer engineering program? Well, a lot of things are unique, but, um... First of all, thank you for uh, uh, calling out my name. Uh, I think as uh, those who know me know that I love to talk and this is a good conversation to have. So thank you, Arthur. And thank you for the first, thank you to the person who posed this question. I believe the computer engineering that we have on campus is a very special program. A special program because of the people that manage the program, because of the people who join the program. So it starts off with the students, extremely high caliber students that we, that we welcome in our program each uh, and every, every year. The program is run by two independent schools and therefore we are able to draw upon the strengths of two units, which is kind of like a rare thing to happen in most places. In most of the other programs will be housed in one unit. Our computer engineering is housed in two. ECE, which is electrical and computer engineering department, and SOC, that's a school of computing. And that would mean that if somebody wishes to specialize in technologies that are more hardware oriented, then maybe they have an inclination or a natural affinity towards ECE. Maybe someone else wants to specialize more. It's, it's still computer engineering, but you wish to specialize more towards the software side. And then we have the school of computing professors uh, managing a whole, as somebody used the word plethora, of uh, modules and, and that's very exciting. And I think, and the students, I have noticed this, the students make the most of this opportunity. So they are able to find their own groove in, in all these opportunities that we sort of put forward. So the idea would be, and here is, I'm gonna sort of maybe enhance the question a little bit further. The idea would be to make the most of the opportunity that these programs offer. And now I speak for both the EE program that we have, as well as the computer engineering program that we have. Folks, uh, as uh, I think it's, it, it comes out in the energy. Actually, I mean, I'm getting old and I don't know if you see, there's a, there's a few gray hair there. 
But these students, they spoke so beautifully well and they bring out the energy, the enthusiasm, the passion that our program provides, that the campus life provides, all right? It's incredible. They spoke about the friendships. I believe this is the best place to experiment. This is the best place to make your friendships. This is the best place to find your group. This is the best time of your life. And there is no place, absolutely no place, better than ECE plus SOC taken together for either of the two programs. This is the best place to be, all right? And, and truly speaking, if you were to ask me to pick one thing that makes this place special, it's the students. It, they are absolutely vulnerable. We provide them the opportunities, but then they beat our, all our expectations by simply through their spirit of, I am here, I'm curious, I am human, I wanna discover myself, I wanna design something, I wanna disrupt something, I wanna destroy something. Because once you destroy what exists, you build on top. And what you build for tomorrow, as somebody said, you solve problems of today so that you are ready to solve problems of tomorrow. It's just a phenomenal place to be for four years. Absolutely wonderful, all right? And please stop me, tell me it's about time, all right? <laughs> Thank you, Arthur. Thank you, Professor Tarika. Um, uh, actually, every yeah, uh, Situ has something yeah, to add. Yeah, I also want to add on that. I think ECA professors are really, really excellent uh, teaching faculties. So. I really gain a lot of insights from some of these professors who have had industrial experiences and then they maybe they'll bring in like industrial speakers to speak to us. And in addition to that, not just the teaching quality, they're also extremely, extremely caring. So for example, um, there was one class when I wasn't understanding anything that was going on during a tutorial. So I just left the class early and the professor actually dropped me an email afterwards to ask me if everything is all right. And I could just speak to him if I need help anytime. So I'm um, yeah, really, really excellent uh, faculty members in ECE. And in addition, the, the, you, uh, during the tutorials, uh, you will have some uh, students, undergraduate students who have taken the modules who are tutoring you. And these tutors from ECE are also really, really excellent. Uh, so, uh, I believe that uh, the tutors in ECE are, um, are of like a quality that is, that is like really better than any other faculties that I have attended lessons at. Yeah, so just, just my add-on. Thank you very much uh, for all your sharing. And um, I hope uh, you all, if you all have any question, please continue to send us an email and uh, we'll be posting this uh, webinar recording uh, on our ECE webpage. So uh, once uh, that is uploaded, uh, I will send every participant a link uh, on where you can access all this uh, information. Uh, once again, uh, thank you very much uh, for attending this session. Uh, actually, um, just now, singing talks about the IDP program. Uh, the, there's now a IDP webinar that is going on, mm -hmm. and uh, we encourage every one of you who are interested to find out more about the IDP program uh, to log on to that webinar and view it. Uh, thank you, everyone, for attending our webinar. Uh, thank you, all the panelists, members, our students, uh, thanks again uh, for spending time with us on a Saturday morning. And uh, I hope everyone has a great weekend. Thank you very much. And we look forward to welcoming all of you to NUS ECE. Absolutely. Bye-bye. Bye. Experience not to be missed. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks, Alison.